Hey guys, my name is Adam Rice. I'm uh, contacting you from Kespri. Uh, Kespri is also hiring, so if any of you guys are looking for jobs once you graduate, more than happy to uh, be in touch. My where, emails. Where are you guys physically? Uh, we are in Palo Alto, oh, California. Cool. Okay. Uh, Adam at Kespri.com. Uh, so what we're talking about here is a Kespri drone system. Uh, it's a multi-pronged system. We have a drone, a ground station, an iPad app, and a cloud application. The drone is incredibly easy to use. It's scalable on two elements, from pilot experience and data management. It doesn't come with a joystick. Anybody can fly the unit, and the camera is fully integrated to the drone, and it's internet connected. Yeah, so when the right. drone lands, it transfers data directly to the iPad, and then directly to the cloud for processing. So all of the processing that our clients do, it's completely hands-off autonomous. Once they click fly, 15 minutes later, the drone lands. Two hours later, they get an email saying their geospatial information is ready in the Kespri cloud. That's our full package. We do a lease model. We lease drones, the box, unlimited processing for a yearly lease. Cool. And uh, and you guys, how long have you guys been building this unit for? So we've uh, we went to market this year in January of this year. Um, the company's been around for two and a half years. It was started by a student at Stanford University with his uh, professor, a computer science professor, um, and it's 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 grown based on uh, client traction. Cool. All right, great. And you guys range again for this in, in, in typical operating. Sure. Uh, so right now, uh, our drones are flying about uh, up to 70 acres of flight. Uh, we have mission decomposition, which if a drone doesn't finish a mission, it can take off uh, and finish a mission that it didn't complete in the past. Okay. Um, so really, it's it's uh, it's limitless. Okay. Uh, operating conditions, it's important to operate very, very safely. Uh, we're not flying in conditions where ground winds are above 15 miles an hour, uh, not operating uh, um, in places, areas with high concentrations of people. Uh, so we love operating on the mine site, the quarry, don't like operating in urban areas. Uh, always operating with the line of sight, uh, comfortable with the unit, making sure you have a sterile area for takeoff and landing, making sure that everybody in the area is aware that you are operating a drone so nobody goes into your landing and takeoff zone when the <laughs> unit's in the air. It's never happened to us. It's never happened before. <laughs> yeah. And always check your obstacles. Always look for trees because I could send you about 15 pictures of clients <laughs> who've called the fire department to get their drones out of trees. So how does this guy, since it's all, since this is all autonomous, how does this guy, does he have acoustic? How is he sensing if there's a tree in the way? Or so right now, just right, too high? right now our drones are flying over the trees. Okay. Uh, that's our way to avoid obstacles. Uh, down the road, we will have the ability to sense and avoid those obstacles, okay. uh, kind of like a digital bumper. Okay. Um, and that's going to be very, very valuable for us to map around vegetation, but also val valuable for things like building inspection. I want to yeah. be able to fly four feet from a building yeah. 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 and capture incredible resolution, incredible imagery, so I can make decisions based on that. And I want to do that without risking my craft. Right. And right now you guys say this is, this is optical, photogrammetric, sort of optimized, but are you guys going to come out with... Infrared or LiDAR, sure. or that's just down the road. Kind of Optimized for photogrammetry, so we do a, a mapping product, 2D and 3D geospatial information. Uh, we're really excited about integrating other sensors. We're really excited about integrating other applications like inspection as well. And you guys said it's your own brain inside. Yes, our whole the drone is um, built from the ground up at Kespri. Uh, we do have some off-the-shelf components. We're not going to make our own props or make our own motors. Uh, mm -hmm. But we did design the whole drone. Uh, we built the autopilot. There are two computers. There's an onboard uh, flight controller and then an onboard, essentially a flying laptop, a 2 gigahertz processor with a 64 gigabyte solid state hard drive and Wi-Fi that enables the data management to be so easy. Cool. And it's really optimized. It looks for for the novice user. It's like, here's the battery, here's yeah. this, push this, so pop we, that on my iPad. We, 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 we call it superintendent friendly. <laughs> um, it's. It, the interesting thing is when we first started selling the drone, the number one problem we had is people didn't know how to charge a battery, um, <laughs> which was a great problem to have. It means we were solving a lot of scalability problems in terms of operating and collecting information, but we needed to keep the system very simple. Uh, so the batteries, you just plug in, you don't touch anything on a charger. Uh, the drone Inside battery, this case, they plug inside, in right in here. Yep, you just yep. pop okay, them cool. in. This, you just plug into the wall. So cool. see, red light's on, it's charging. Cool. Very simple and straightforward. The drone just has an on and off button, and then the app is incredibly easy. All right, cool. All right, great. So, Kespri up in Palo Alto, awesome, awesome. Yes, Kespri Palo Alto, and we're hiring. Uh, my email is adam at kespri.com. Looking awesome. for engineers and business people. Cool. Right. Thanks, Adam. Got it.